Hello everyone, it's GigaBeef here, and today we're looking at the MP9N, one of the best budget guns for leg meta shredding. With its fearsome 1100 RPM, this makes it the second highest fire rate in the entire game, alongside the 45 Vector, and it can be picked up for an insanely cheap price most of the time. But before we continue, today's video is sponsored by the Ridge Wallet, a really robust solution to both card and key carrying. Prior to switching to Ridge, I used to use this wallet, which is okay, I guess, but I also used to carry around this massive set of keys. The Ridge Wallet, on the other hand, holds up to 12 cards in a really satisfyingly secure way, as well as cash on the clip here. It comes in a ton of cool designs, and it blocks unsolicited RFID reading as well as an additional bonus. Honestly, one of the best things about it is just the build quality. It's so light, but it's so much more durable than a regular wallet, and also it's literally the size of a card, so it fits into a front pocket really, really easily. Same goes for the key case. This holds two to six keys, and my car key goes on a little ring at the back. After reviewing my massive pod of keys, I need precisely, yeah, two of them, so I feel a bit silly lugging around literally 13 keys and four tags for years. The Ridge team are so confident that you'll be converted that they have a 45 day test drive period after which you can get your money back if you don't love it and a lifetime warranty if you do. What's more, you can get the best offer right now at ridge.com forward slash gigaridge to save up to 40% off through December the 22nd. So that's ridge.com forward slash gigaridge to join the 50,000 strong five star rated proud owners of the Ridge wallet. All right, so back to the MP9N. As we said, its standout feature is its fire rate combined with a budget price, because when compared to the number one fire rate weapon, the G18C pistol, even with the stock, this thing still has 220 vertical recoil. The MP9N, on the other hand, starts with 49 recoil, which makes a massive difference, and although there's not a huge amount that we can do with it from here, it's a very controllable gun right from the get-go. Interestingly, you can't buy the MP9N from traders at all, having to rely solely on the flea market. The regular MP9 can be bought from Peacekeeper too, but this version without the N only has 900 RPM, so is a touch slower on the fire rate, but these two guns are broadly interchangeable. Into the build, to get the most out of this weapon, we need to equip a sound suppressor mount to the front and attach an MP9 suppressor onto that, which is the only supported muzzle device. This reduces the recoil down to 44, but is totally optional. As a Mechanic 3 purchase, it's locked to a relatively high trader level, and you can use the gun just fine without it. Once you have the mount, you can then attach a laser or a flashlight directly underneath, depending on what you prefer, rather than using the side mount over here if you're not using it. Really oddly, the upper for the MP9N gives less ergo than a regular MP9. If you really want to min-max it, you can swap to one of these instead, but as they aren't a trader item and players typically don't list these on the fleet either, the only way to get it most of the time is to buy a regular MP9, take off the cover, sell the rest back to Mechanic, and then attach it to the MP9N. This often ends up costing around 10k. Is it worth it for 3 ergo? Well, probably not, but it's interesting to see that these are different at all. In terms of magazines, this is where we get a little bit limited. The options are 15, 20, 25 and 30. Obviously with such a fire rate, we're really gunning for the 30s, which are Peacekeeper 3. There is a barter for a gas analyzer at Peacekeeper 2 as well if you're really desperate, which can be cheaper than the flea sometimes. Unfortunately, the 25s are also Peacekeeper 3 and the next down are the 20s at Peacekeeper 2. I just don't think it's worth using this gun without at least the first mag being a 30 rounder because even then you only get 1.6 seconds of shooting time before you're empty. This is where the argument for the regular MP9 comes in slightly, as the lower fire rate firstly helps with the recoil and secondly means that you don't run out of bullets quite as quickly at 2 seconds of sustained fire instead before going dry with a 30 round mag. This is at the expense of time to kill of course, and with the MP9N we're kind of going all in on a very specific playstyle, so it's a trade-off to consider. With the Picatinny rail at the top, you can use whatever you want for optics. Personally, I'd probably just go with a delta point, but any will do. I mean, at least half the time, we'll probably be point firing without using it at all. So pre-optic, this whole gun will cost us about 60k, and 30,000 if you decide to go loud and proud. So with our weapon down, it's on to ammo. 9mm has really been suffering the past few wipes, in part because of its lack of availability and low performance at the top end compared to other calibers. EVP, the best round for penetration, is actually not terrible, slightly better than M856A1 in my opinion, but it costs around 1600 to 1800 to craft it with a base time of 12 hours and you only get 200. Using this in a regular way will also fail against class 5 armour, which is fairly common after the first two months of the wipe. The second best ammo, AP 6.3, simply doesn't have enough penetration as it has issues even with class 4, which is why we turn to the leg meta ammo at the other end of the scale. 9mm does have good flesh damage rounds, with Rip being the king and Quake Maker in second place. Rip can be bought on the fleet, usually between 600 to 700 rubles per round, as well as bought in boxes of 20 using two barters, one with Skier for a Strike and a Wilston, and one with Jaeger for a Green Tea. 
The T is normally the go-to. If you can snag these for 9k or less, that only makes them 450 each, or even lower potentially. Having to buy them in 20s and unpack them one box at a time though is really quite annoying. You can craft rip as well in the workbench, but I don't think this is really worth it. If you wanted to do it easily, it's actually just cheaper to get it from the flea market because once you take into account opportunity cost, it ends up not really making sense. Quake Maker, the next one down, is a Peacekeeper 3 round and costs $2.58 a bullet, so at about 280 rubles using the Peacekeeper exchange rate. It's also available on the flea, but normally it's not that much cheaper than rip to be honest with you. Importantly though, looking at the damages, Rip is a 5 shot kill and Quake Maker is 6, remembering that fragmentation doesn't occur on rounds with less than 20 pen. What's interesting about this though is that 5 shots from Rip deals 510 damage, which is quite a bit more than the 440 that we need to kill a PMC by shooting them in the legs. Technically speaking, at point blank you can hit with 4 shots of Quake Maker and 1 shot of Rip and still secure a 5 hit kill, as this deals 442 damage. If you can be bothered, 3 quakes and 1 rip on repeat gives a bit of leeway for misses and should get the job done just the same as mags full of rip on their own. Unfortunately, because we don't have any tools for mixed mag packing currently, making these magazines will probably drive you insane. The best practical way then is probably just half rip at the top and half quake at the bottom. So by means of comparison, the closest gun that is a step up to the MP9N is the 45 Vector, given the same fire rate and access to even stronger flesh ammo. The low recoil on the Vector is superior to the MP9N, but the basic Vector pre-suppressor costs as much as the whole suppressed MP9N, but that is probably fair enough given its better stats. Interestingly, the 45 version of the Vector suffers from exactly the same issues as the MP9N in that 30 rounders are the largest capacity magazines that you can get, and at 1100 RPM you run out of bullets very very quickly. The Vector though does get access to 45 rip, which at 137 damage each is only a 4 hit kill. To note, it's such a strong flesh round that it's nearly a 3 hit. 45 rip is mechanic 4 and much rarer on the fleet, but once you have access to it at the trader, it's only 391 rubles each, which can help to close the gap between the two guns. If you're using full magazines of 9mm rip at 600, the price difference is 6k per 30 rounder. 3 or 4 of these and you're really starting to erode the value of the MP9N, unless you're going to the effort of at least half half stacking with Quake Makers. I've been having a ton of fun with the MP9N and you do need to change your playstyle a little bit and be careful about pathing when you're going for leg meta, but it's been working pretty well for me, so finally let's just see how it did in a few of my raids. It's a scav. Well I sure showed him, didn't I? It's another scav. I'd have to start using like this guy's shotty to kill scavs because I'm starting to get fed up. So I'm gonna go this way. All of that sounds like outside and kind of far. See now this. This is a really crappy place to um, to be fighting with <laughs> with an MP9. This area is truly bad. Let's stay up here. Because I want to hear when people are fighting. It sounded like I was fighting over an idea, but... Sounds like movement over here. Nice. Let's just pop around. Oh, there's, there's no cover that way. Uh, uh, uh. Maybe there to do the reload. No, I can be seen from a million miles away. Okay, great. Beat to ADS is amazing balls. It is for a suppressor, yeah. It's just because the um, it's because the ergo intrinsically within the gun is high, and the weight is really low. Like two kilos is super low. It's like full a full thirty rounder with with two point two kilos is nutty. It's like borderline pistol territory, you know. Borderline pistol territory. I mean, that guy is in like the worst, literally the worst location to loot him of all time. But we're gonna do it anyway. MP7. Would you look at that? OK, 
Okay, so the question is, where are they in here? They're like ADS between the computers, but I don't know where. Let's see. Oh, I got caught on the... Ah, oh, crap. I got caught on the box behind me by my, by my right leg. I think I nearly killed him anyway. I nearly killed him. Good. No. Is someone gonna push me? I guess not. End of sky bridge. Could have been. Yeah, just looking down like that. It did do a big boy amount of damage to me, that's for sure. Someone's dead down here. Yeah, I think I think they might be up on the bridge. Okay. Can't hear anyone. I heard somebody else. Just don't know where. Which way would I rather be? I'd rather be on the other stairs, not this stairs. If possible. Still sitting Skybridge, sounds like. Maybe. He has like sat in Skybridge. Makes it very difficult for me to. Hmm. Run to gate zero. I think so. I don't think I'm going to kill him otherwise. Do, 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 do. He's coming. Oh yeah, no key. energy again. I can get energy again from using a golden star. It doesn't hurt me anymore because I have max metabolism. <laughs> that was a perfect route attack, wasn't it? Had you on the, ro on the ropes in the office? Well, yeah, because he's lying down. How am I going to leg meta him if he's lying down? That's not the way leg meta is supposed to go. I'm supposed to be able to see them toes. i got to run back through to get to gate three. Okay, let's go. We've got five energy. 
Right, guys, it's do or die. Careful of player scouts. I will try my best. Don't have the key. No, I didn't bring it with me. Couldn't even see him in Sky Bridge, don't get me wrong. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, like, I knew he was on the floor, but I was just like, man, this is insane. So next up, go and check out my video on the most accurate weapon in Tarkov. Otherwise, as usual, a big shout out to all my patrons. Hit all the buttons if you enjoyed the video. And as always, have fun in your raids.